Hello and welcome to this review of Project N, a custom project with the new Kalebox Navy switches. This is a continuation of the last installment of my Teardown series where we looked at these switches, which were developed by Novel Keys, and as promised I would deck out a full keyboard with them to see what they were like to actually use. Full disclosure, these were sent to me by Novel Keys, who designed them based on the original design by Kai Hua, for free, so this is a sponsored video. But, as always, I'll be doing the video impartially, giving my honest opinion and pointing out flaws where I find them. So, just a little bit of background on them, among the first generation of box switches was this white box switch, which came with a thin torsion spring acting as a click bar, which is an interesting innovation. It first appeared on Kai Wa's new low-profile switches as a means of generating tactility and a clicky noise in a low-profile package, which is not possible using the common click jacket technique that MX switches use as this necessitates the use of a taller switch housing. Little did they know this click bar would turn out to be by far the most interesting thing about the whole switch series. Novel Keys have since developed a heavy version of this white box switch, which is the pale blue one, a thick bar version, which is the jade one, and a heavy and thick bar one, which is this navy switch. The thing that makes these thick bar versions so interesting compared to the thin bar switches is that they enormously increase the tactility of the switch, and because of the appalling lack of modern, genuinely tactile switches, this innovation has kind of taken the keyboard community straight by the balls, and they have met with rave reviews as a consequence. So, to try them out for myself, I mounted them in a keyboard. But not a Corsair or a Logitech or some other modern piece of rubbish, no of course not. A proper chassis from 1983, a WISE WY50 specifically, which I bought at the last Dutch keyboard meetup in Utrecht. The WY50 is a common terminal keyboard most well known for being a good source for vintage MX black switches. I got the chassis off of Yonic, Raphael provided the caps, Paul helped me with the conversion process, and Martin, who likes to desolder, took out the original switches, which I've already reviewed twice before anyway, so I didn't really need them. I previously did a video of a G80-3000 modified with box whites, but in retrospect that wasn't ideal because these switches lack fixing pins, so PCB mount is pretty bad for them, and the G80-3000 has a super shit PCB and no actual build quality to speak of. The Wise, by contrast, has a thick 1.5mm painted steel mounting plate with brass screw inserts, fuck yeah, and it's built very tautly and the PCB is pretty nice as well, so big improvements all around. It also weighs a hefty 1.6 kilos, which is not bad for a board that's not even all that big, and it's got a single, giant, spring-loaded flip-out foot. It was originally very dirty, but I gave it some tender loving care and now it's looking pretty fresh again. I left on the special stickers it came with as well, I think it adds a nice touch of personality to the keyboard, although it's really distracting when typing, especially if you don't touch type. <laughs> Just a quick word on the conversion process, it uses a very unusual 10-pin DIN plug for which I haven't been able to find a socket yet. But according to an old post from Sora, you can wire these up to a teensy and then it, quote-unquote, just works. He wired it directly into the PCB, but I like to use the original cable whenever I can, especially if it's a nice and thick high quality one like this. So I jury rigged this soft mod converter using some wiring and a bunch of heat shrink sleeves to mate with the plug, so to speak, and now it works. For anyone who's interested, here's the pinout to the PCB, plug and the respective teensy ports they belong to. So, anyway, let's get to the thing you've all been waiting for, the switches. Do they hold up to all the hype? Are they the real deal? Well, I've done some testing and tinkering, and I've come to the conclusion that they're pretty damn awesome. But, that said, I have found that there are some limitations to the design that I want to get to first. First of all, these switches only work within a certain weight ratio between the coil and torsion springs. Mike actually hinted at this when he told me that his original design of a 0.35mm click bar didn't work, so he went for a 0.30mm one instead. By comparison, the standard thickness click bar is 0.25mm. 
As it turns out, if the coil spring is too light, it doesn't possess sufficient strength to reset the plunger after it's cleared the click bar, so the thick bar switches necessitate the use of at least medium stiff coil springs or they will not operate correctly. Several people have reported to me in the comments to the previous video that the lighter box jade switch has trouble resetting sometimes, or is at the least slightly slow to come back up, while others mention that they haven't experienced any issues with this. Now I've hacked a handful of these jade switches together by swapping the springs from white box switches into navy ones, which then become identical to jade, and I can confirm that this is actually the case on some of them. At this weight, some of the switches feel like they lag behind a little bit, and I managed to make one of the switches actually stick down from time to time, while others had no issues, so it appears that the jade switches are teetering right on the edge of acceptable spring weight ratios. Because the navy box switches come with extra heavy springs, I had originally intended to swap the springs on the alpha keys to make them into jades to make for a lighter typing experience. But after I did these tests, I decided against it. It's something that I advise novel keys to check out and tweak a bit, as I'm sure it takes only a minor adjustment to guarantee surefire operation. However, the extra stiffness of the navy switches does guarantee correct switch operation. I've not been able to make these stick at all and they pop right back up. There's no delay, so these are definitely in the safe zone. They have a weighting of about 77 grams at the tactile bump, which is just under that of Cherry MX Green, and they're very tactile with a bump over 40 grams deep, and it's a really sharp tactility as well, which is delightful. Now Laser over on Desk Authority put in an excellent comment on my previous video, which was, I like that it's assumed that more tactile equals progress, adding that some users prefer more lightly tactile switches. And I completely agree with this, I mean there is such a thing as too much tactility and more doesn't necessarily equal better. And for those who don't really like particularly pronounced tactility, a cherry switch or even just one of the previous thin bar clicky switches will probably be a better fit. I myself favour medium but sharply tactile switches like Monterey's, Blue Alps and Beam and Buckling Springs, although I also like heavily tactile ones such as Matthias switches and especially Amber Alps. What I like about these navy switches is that there is now a modern, in-production switch that is strongly sharply tactile for those of us who do want beefy tactility, and although the 77 gram weighting is a bit much for me, I have to admit I really enjoy using these switches. After a bit of getting used to them, because honestly it takes so much work to push these down, they're really satisfying to use. Crisply tactile and with a very smooth key travel as well due to the low contact area and factory applied lubricants. It's great, I really like these. Among modern switches, I'd say these are pretty high up on my list. Now, some people have asked if this is the most tactile switch I know of, but that's not the case. The most tactile switch I know of is some kind of obscure and really weird Cheapest Chips Alps clone, which Harta measured at my behest, which has a drop of 45 grams out of 50 over an eighth of a millimeter, so about 90% of the total switch weight in virtually no distance at all. Funnily enough, this result also points out that the Alps design doesn't have this limited weight ratio in which the slider will still pop back up, as the weight after the bump is as little as 5 grams, and it bottoms out at as little as 15, which gives rise to a cool but very weird feeling switch. The only modern switch that's still available that comes anywhere close to this amount of tactility is the Matthias Click Switch, which has a bump of 30 grams at extreme almost vertical sharpness, but that's still not as tactile as the Box Navy switches. Now onto the next item, which is sound. One of the things I commented on is how much sharper and more metallic the sound that a click bar has to offer is than that of a more traditional click jacket like you find on MX switches, which gives a very rattly and plasticky sound as I've mentioned several times before. To show exactly what I mean by this, I've recorded the audio from an MX switch versus that of a box switch, and here are the waveforms to show you what I mean. As you can see, the cherry switches have a much more random, rattly, less defined waveform than does the box switch, which just has a single, sharp, defined peak.
definitely an improvement. The original white box switch did have a very high pitch though, and when I recommended they use a thicker click bar, I also had in mind that this would lower the pitch a bit. However, this appears to not actually be the case, if anything it's slightly more high pitched, and it also had a secondary effect that I didn't think of, namely, it's much louder. Ah man, that's quite, <laughs> that's quite something right there. In this wise chassis, they sound a lot fuller than loose switches do naturally, because they're mounted in a proper thick steel plate, and the wise uses thin double shot ABS caps, which in my experience tend to be the best for bringing out the sound of switches. However, the absolute best caps for sound have to be SA caps though. That's good. That's really good. Finally, a note on actuation. I mentioned previously that the white box switches actuate just before the click, which is pretty subtle but can interfere from time to time. It's nowhere near as bad as on the bronze switches, which also use a click bar, and which have this very badly, it's quite noticeable on those apparently, and I think that that might be one of the reasons why those haven't caught on as much. Now, I've tested it on these navy switches, and just as I'd hoped, they have fixed it somehow, as I haven't been able to actuate any of them before the click, so this is nice. So, Judgment Day, what do I think of them? Well, I think they're great, especially for a modern switch, these are a very competitive choice, with a crisp sound, very smooth key feel, and for a production switch at least, unmatched tactility. They are very stiff though, so people who don't like heavy switches will probably find these quite disagreeable, but for those who don't mind a bit of weight, I definitely recommend checking these out. Especially people who are currently using Cherry MX Green or equivalent stiff clicky switches really owe it to themselves to give these a go, because they absolutely blow the cherries out of the water in every way in my opinion. I think Novel Keys are onto a great formula, and if anything I'd advise them to try at some more intermediate weightings as well, with a medium thick click bar and a lighter coil spring to get a lighter and not quite as world shatteringly tactile clicky switch to augment this current lineup. And for fuck's sake, use some less confusing colours and nomenclature this time, please, guys. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.